Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. We are back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio. My name is Shep Hyken, and we have an amazing guest today. It is Jeff Mesger, who is the president and CEO of KB Home. Coffin and Broad is the original name, but KB Home. Uh, he's been on the board of directors since 2006. And in 2016, he was named chairman of the board. Now, before we get into the interview, a couple of quick announcements. And if you've heard the show, you know what they are. If you've got a story you want to share or a question you want to ask about customer service and experience, just reach out to me on any of the social channels. I'm everywhere. And if it is a question, use the hashtag AskShep. I'm going to answer it in the social channel in my newsletter, or on my TV show, which is Be Amazing or Go Home. And you can catch episodes on Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Roku, and you can even go to beamazing.tv. We've put some of the episodes on YouTube. That's beamazing.tv. All right, let's jump into this interview. I'm very excited. I got to tell you, when I, when I got on today and I started talking with Jeff, I kept having to say, Jeff, hold this for the interview. Hold this for the interview. And he kept giving me insight after insight after insight. I don't even know where to start anymore, but Jeff, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. It's great to be here. So it all started where I was approached by your PR agency asking if I would be interested in an interview. And I saw what some of the topics were, which to your point, as we were talking about just before we started the recording, had a lot to do with how well the company's doing. The company's doing well. It's, it's an amazing company. It's been around for, gosh, uh, what? Close to 50 years, 60 years? 65. 65 years. Wow. That's older than both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say both of us combined. But so here's, here's the point. You've been around for a long time. You're a home in the home building business. Homes are hot right now. Uh, I'm sure your stock's doing well. We're going to break away from your traditional economics types, types of interviews. And we're going to go and we're going to talk about what's happening behind the scenes and how you deal with your customers. Lots are hap lots happening in this crazy economy that we have. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, and, and I kind of think this will get to the core to everything. Uh, customer service, I know is paramount. All I need to do is go on your website and see you put your customer in front and make a lot of decisions based on the customer. You have an incredible process. It's very efficient. You've been around but now that process is disrupted due to economic conditions and specifically supply chain issues. Um, I know home builders that are telling their customers, I'm sorry, I know I promised you six or seven months, it's gonna be a year to year and a half. I know you've got efficiencies and you've got buying power, but I know that you've extended your, your expectations out for your customers. How do you deal with, with bad news? You have to over communicate every step of the way. Good. Mm -hmm. if, if you think about it, um, we're, we're providing the service of creating the American dream. And it, it's the largest investment in somebody's life. So you, you can't possibly communicate it enough, even though we go to great lengths to, to talk people through it. They're nervous. Many of our buyers are first time home buyers. They're scared to death. They've never uh, seen a home built for themselves before. And you absolutely have to communicate. And it's, it's uh, deeply ingrained in our culture to over communicate and to be a partner with our customer. So when the supply chain disruption hit, it was, it was easy to uh, toggle it up another level, if you will, and make sure we were communicating even more. And that's what we've been effectively doing over the last year and a half. Wow. So two things. Number one, you use the word partner with your customer. So you're not the company they buy from. You're a partner in their life venture. It, it, I, I think it's the way I'm hearing you say it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And as far as it's over- a very, very collaborative process, we call it. Well, yeah. And, and I'm going to get into the customization and personalization because of, to the point of what it says on your website, no two homes are alike. And we'll explain what that means in just a moment. It's not like I mean, there is a formula, there is a process, but you, but the customer gets to choose the home of their dreams and, and pick out the features and everything they want. But um, you mentioned uh, over-communicating. 
This is a great lesson for everybody listening right now. I've talked about it before. The more you communicate with your customer, even if it's about delays, bad news, and I think the, of all the times I'm sitting in an airport wondering why the gate agent isn't giving us an update on when the plane's going to arrive. But the moment they do, it's like the, it, there's a collective sigh of relief in the airport you know, area uh, in the gate because everybody now feels like they have control because they have a piece of knowledge. The more you communicate, the more knowledge your customer has, the more in control they feel, which is what you want. You want them to feel like they're not a victim of this, they're in control and they're going with you. Yeah. I, I heard a saying once, Chef, that bad news, or I'm sorry, no news is bad news. Bad news is good news. Well, bad news, bad news could be, it's better than no news. That's for sure. So you, you, <laughs> you have, even if it's something that is unpleasant, you have to, to talk to people because it's much, much more impactful and beneficial than saying nothing. And um, if, if you go up top shop, it's, uh, we, we did a bold thing back in 18. We, we were trying to figure out our branding position and what we were all about. And we hired a firm to help us. And we did focus groups with our customers and realtors and employees. And, and uh, the takeaway that kept coming back was, you guys do everything so well, you just don't talk about it in terms of about KB. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, fine. So we, we come up with some new campaigns to promote what we do about our focus with the customer and how customer centric we are. And then they threw me the, the fastball that I had to ponder for a bit. Uh, they asked me, what, what's your vision statement for the company? And I rattled off the, the corporate speak about taking care of the customer and shareholder returns. And it was, no, Jeff, what's your vision for the company? And I said, I wanna be viewed as the, the most customer centric home builder out there. And we talked about it a bit and they actually elevated it to when we were done and I agreed to it, where our vision is to be the most customer obsessed home builder in the world. If you go that's on a vision, website, that's a, that's a lofty vision. That's the vision. And what was interesting as I thought about it, I knew that the, the data and the results would reinforce it. I thought we were going way out there. And I, we actually had a meeting with all the senior managers in the company where I introduced this. And the, the embrace of this concept was instant because we were already doing it. We just weren't talking about it. And what happened then over time, if you were to go visit with, in one of our communities and in, in our company, we're very decentralized. We're in 35 cities. In each city, there's 10 different communities that are uh, scattered from hither to yon, 60 miles apart. So you're, you're only as good as the, the people on the ground in that city that are interacting with your customer. And the, the mantra that evolved out of that at a community team level. So it would, if they're dealing with something with a customer, the question that the team would ask themselves is, what would the most customer obsessed home builder in the world do? Mm. And that became the standard. And all of a sudden it was simple. Decisions were made quicker and uh, they did it with confidence. Well, I love that. Uh, so here's the mantra to use the word mantra. And that's the word that I use in my books to describe the one sentence vision that is your North star of where you want your customer vision to be. The Ritz Carlton has, we're ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. Your goal is we want to be the most customer obsessed home builder in the world. Uh, I think that's a pretty lofty goal. And when you put the customer in the position of like, this is who we need to put first, great. But let's talk about how you get there because uh, you have an extensive training program for all of the employees that come to work for you. And uh, it's, it's, uh, I want to hear a little bit more about it. I don't know as much as I'd like to know, it's four weeks long. I know that. So when you come to work, is that the first thing you do is you're put into a four week extensive training program? Uh, orientation program that starts with the customer. Customer is number one. Hmm. First thing they learn about. And, and you spend four weeks with them. Yeah. Um, the first couple of weeks, it's hundred percent of the time. 
interacting with different department heads and communication training and, and skills. And then it slowly works into a parallel path where they're engaged in their day-to-day -day job duties while continuing to, to get educated and trained on um, what we do as a company. Uh, look at, I mean, I think about the great companies that are out there and all of them believe in what you're talking about right now. Not many of them will take the first two weeks or four weeks, but, you know, for two weeks, nonstop training. You know, Zappos.com was famous for their two-week training program. And at the end of two weeks, Tony Shea, their CEO, may rest in peace, would come in and say, I hope everybody likes what they learn. And by the way, if you don't like what you learn and you don't think you're a fit here, we're going to pay you to walk out of this room. <laughs> they paid them to leave because they wanted to make sure they were a great fit. But outside of that, just the fact that a company is willing to invest that kind of money into somebody they just hired means, number one, you're doing a good job hiring the right people because otherwise uh, you don't want to spend time training somebody that isn't going to work out. But number two, you're investing a tremendous amount in this person and in the future this person has with your company. And on top of that, Chef, a lot of the trainers, that you're training the trainers, but then they train the next generation of employees and it validates for them that they're at the right company and that they fit in because their standards and how they approach it are what the company's all about. So it, wow. it, it creates quite a community within the company. So you say you're in 35 cities, is that right? Yes. And approximately how many employees? 2,400. 2,400 employees. That's, that's great. And yeah, you're, you're doing great. And I remember, you know, you and I were talking about this before where I met uh, Mr. Broad, Eli Broad, and um, this was way, way back. And I guess he had at some point moved out to Phoenix, Arizona, and I was there for a very short time. And it was great meeting him. And I, that's where I first learned about your company. So that was probably close to uh, 35, 40 years ago. So I've known about them longer than you've been at the company. How's that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, he, he, Eli just passed away, but it, um, he, uh, he detached totally from the company, he left the board in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. I would still go have lunch with him about every 90 days because his office was right down the street in Westwood. Wow. And uh, this, this man was brilliant. And uh, on, at, relative to our financial statements, he knew as much about them as I did. When we'd have impressive. lunch. Yep. It was, it was pretty impressive. Anyway, I enjoyed the time uh, I got to spend with him. Learn something in every lunch. Yeah. Well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk more about your customer obsession and how you take care of customers in the world of the home buyer. We'll be right back. This is Amazing Business Radio. Don't go away. Hi, Shep Hyken, your customer service and experience expert. And I'm excited to tell you about my new book, I'll Be Back, How to Get Customers to Come Back Again and Again. Now, this book is packed with idea after idea on how to, just as the title implies, get your customers to come back. In the book, you'll learn that repeat customers aren't always loyal customers. Now, both are great, but there's a big difference. You'll also learn about 10 reasons a customer may stop doing business with you and three reasons you would stop doing business with them. And one of my favorite lessons is a six-step process for creating an I'll Be Back strategy. Of course, there's much, much more. You'll start getting more of your customers to say, I'll be back almost immediately. Just go to www.I'llBeBackBook.com. Again, that's www.I'llBeBackBook.com. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We're back on Amazing Business Radio talking with Jeff Mesger, the president and CEO and now chairman of the board of KB Homes. And something a lot of people may not realize, 35 cities, and you're ranked number one as a business, as a home builder in all of these cities, or tied for number one. That's quite a feat that I think when you start combining the idea of we're a great company and we've got a good product and it's out there and then you've got this great obsession with the customer and you put the two of them together and you're doing an incredible job of training your, your employees. Now we add a third element in there. You've got this triple threat uh, that's just, just doing uh, amazing. Anyway, uh, so KB Home is ranked number one. Um, Tell me about how you can validate that. Yeah. 
Well, Shep, when you say we're ranked number one, which is true, it's, it's ranked number one by third party survey companies. We're not involved. They contact people, they get, they track closings in the city and will survey the buyers after they've closed. And there's two different third party survey vehicles that we use. One's called Consumer Affairs and one call, is called Trust Builder. And in either case, they rank you by city. So it, there's a competition among our divisions for who's going to have the highest score. And if they're not tops, they try to do things to uh, get there. Then in turn, you also, uh, how, how do I fare compared to the other builders in each market? And in, in either case, we're number one. So it, it's a third party source that validates we're taking care of the customer better than anybody else out there. You know, I love it. It's a great metric. I always believe metrics are history lessons. They validate that we're doing a good job and there things, there's things in those history lessons. There's ideas and, you know, maybe comments and opinions and feedback that will help us be even better. Uh, what do you do to ensure you stay on top? Well, you can never stop raising the bar. And uh, once you do, you're dead. So you're, you're always shooting for a higher target. And one of the things that we really focus on, Shep, is listening to the customer along the way. So we do a lot of feedback loops through the whole process, whether it's prior to the sale, after the sale, before you start the home, after you start the home periodically, when you've closed the home, and then in turn, three different times after the close. So we're constantly seeking feedback from the customer and, and um, to the point you just raised, you get nuggets of, of data and info that you can use to make yourself better through the feedback that you get from people. And it, it doesn't stop when you close the home, they're your partner for life. So we continue to talk with them well into their warranty period. Wow, that's amazing. I know that when I buy a car, um, I get a survey from the dealer. And the dealer, by the way, usually the salesperson or the dealer in the service department pleads with me to give them a perfect score because otherwise they're going to get fired. Their kids are going to starve. They're never going to go to school and be educated. They give me all these reasons. They guilt me into it. And they over-survey me, I believe, on top of it. I get the feeling that, um, I, and, and I, I'm being very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm probably... Uh, stereotyping the experience there with the car dealer. But if I'm going to be surveyed throughout the entire process, do you let the client know, your customer know that that's going to happen that uh, so they don't feel they're being over communicated in that area? I know over communication is important in one area, but here we are trying to get feedback, asking how we're doing. Do we feel, do they ever feel like it's overdone? Uh, we've certainly not received any feedback like that. In fact, we the feedback is, thank you for, for asking. And as, as I mentioned earlier, Chef, it's a collaboration. When you buy a car, you're, you're kind of a number. And you're out the door with your car and they move on. We're partnering with these people. Um, as I said, it's the biggest purchase in their life. You have to take care of them. I think they appreciate that you're listening to them and responding if there's, if there's an issue raised. And um, we look to these happy homeowners to continue to refer more future homeowners uh, to us. It's not a number. It's, it's a partnership. Yeah, I love that. And how often does that homeowner come back and buy another home from you? Uh, I, I don't have the, the most recent statistics, but it's quite a bit. Um, just in referrals, about 30% of our sales are referrals. That's huge. Yeah. And so it, it's one of the ways being good at customer satisfaction helps your business. It doesn't cost you money. It makes you money. Yeah, no doubt about that. And you're doing a great job. You have some standards that are in place. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about, you know, checking in, surveying your customers along the way, finding out, getting their opinion and reaction. But here's a great standard. The team is, and I'm, I'm reading this, the team is required to respond to any home buyer questions within four hours and they provide their mobile number for easy access and, and, you know, uh, the ability to communicate. That's a great standard. Yeah. Uh, is, 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 I mean, do you hit that every time? I mean, it's probably there's anomalies where you don't, but that would be the goal. I mean, you don't have people saying, well, you promised this and let me go, but I'd love to know 
everybody keeps to that standard. Are there other standards like that that are customer focused standards that would make people say, sure. well, if that's what you're going to do. I want to do business with a company like you. Sure. Well, and, and all these things are measurable, Shep. So it's not, it's not uh, some subjective thing that's out there and maybe you do it or maybe you don't. They're, they're measurable. And a, a good example, um, in each of our communities, we create what we call a community team. And the, the members of the team are the salesperson, the construction manager, the customer service rep, the studio consultant that helped them with their studio selection, and the uh, mortgage loan officer, because mortgage financing is a big part of, of the home buying process. And this group is empowered, there's clarity, and it's what would the most customer obsessed home builder in the world do? And that's the way they they operate, but they're all they're required as a group to communicate with the customer at least once a week through the process. So if it takes six months to build their home, every week of that six month period, the team is contacting them. Mm. You know, phone or email, whatever. What's going on? Here's an update on your home. Do you have any issues? Any concerns? Anything we can do? And it's all uh, measured. Wow. Wow. And so 2,400 employees, how often do they get together in a group meeting, uh, either in their cities or whatever to meet and get additional training, uh, be brought up to date on what's going on in the company? Do you do much of that with your employees out in the field? We do. And, and post pandemic, as, as things have advanced, the uh, Zoom meeting is pretty easy to do. When um, you're in 10 communities scattered around a city, to bring everybody in, it could be a two two hour drive from some of the suburbs into the the main office. You do it on Zoom, and you you can do it. It's much easier, and the employees are much happier. Right, and it, so they, it gives them more time to be in their community as opposed to sitting at the steering wheel trying to get into the office. So, um, uh, the on the training side, we we have constant follow up training and advancement and. One of the other things, Shep, that I, I like in our company, and I've said this a few times, we're very decentralized, but we have standardized processes around the system. So we do it the same way in Orlando that we do in Denver or Austin or Sacramento. And it, if you operate that way and somebody does something extremely well that's very successful and effective, you now have a best practice that you can share throughout your organization. And everybody understands it and they can apply it real time in a, a pretty short order. So we do a lot of uh, training, like functional training, where we'll get all the customer service heads on a Zoom call and talk about best practices and what worked for you. And, and it's them training themselves, uh, you know, with us guiding and, and moderating. And it, when something hits that resonates with the whole group, it's out in the field very quickly. And so we, we really promote a lot of interaction and training at the department level. And then we've got all the, the standards that we train on periodically through the year. And there's refresh courses to remind people along the way. Yeah, very important. Um, I know, I, how often do you actually jump in and, and surprise people in these meetings? It, it's my favorite part of my job. All right, I love it. So you feel very connected to the people that are out there in these 35 different cities. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it, it's a lot more fun talking with one of your buyers, walking a model park, kicking the dirt that's being developed and interacting in the, out in a city than it is sitting in the corporate office. Love it, love it. I'd much, so, much rather you, be with the people and the team. And you don't even have to go undercover to be the undercover boss. You just go out there and do it, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Great, great. All right. Well, we're just about out of time. And I always ask the final question as the one thing question. One last nugget of information you'd love to share with us on how a company like KB Home uh, does it right. Yeah. I know our listeners would love to hear this. Well, um, Shep, I, I refer to us as being customer obsessed. It really starts with knowing what the customer wants. Kind of, a, it's a simple concept, but Home builders are typically creative experts that know what the customer want. And um, we, we do a lot of surveying in every city we operate in of people that bought homes. 
and what do they value and uh, how important school district and how far are you willing to drive to work and do you need a fireplace in your house and do you uh, want an island kitchen or just a larger you know pantry and we have all these questions we ask not of our buyers but of home buyers pretty interesting concept and we we now have a database of millions and millions of these surveys from around the country and it starts with putting a product on the ground that you know the customer wants and desires and prefers and if you start there and you understand what the customer wants and then you partner with them to achieve what they want and then you deliver on the promise you you, you have an absolute home run yeah, that, that's a winning combination. Yeah. yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's amazing, actually, which is why we call this Amazing Business Radio. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Jeff, for being on our show today. Great insights. Enjoy it. Well, thanks. All right, everybody, that wraps it up. Another interview on Amazing Business Radio. We'll be back next week and have another, um, I don't know, it could be an author, thought leader, or perhaps someone in the trenches like Jeff Mesger of KB Home. By the way, it's KB Home. I think I errantly said KB Homes earlier in the conversation. It's kind of like, is it Nordstrom or Nordstrom's? It's Nordstrom. It's KB Home. And Jeff, thank you again for being on the show. All right. Th thank you. Good talking with you. All right, everybody. We'll be back next week. Until then, this is Chef Hyken reminding you to always be amazing. <laughs>